All right, so if you're looking for your videos to look like this, this, or this, you might wanna stick around for this video because we're gonna be talking about mixing two concepts together, which is cinematography and actually creating fitness content. Now, in the last couple of years, I've had the opportunity to work a lot in the fitness industry, and that's anywhere between working with personalities with millions of subscribers, professional athletes in the fitness and bodybuilding space, or even billion dollar athleisure companies. And in today's video, I actually broke them down into four separate sections so you could actually capture fitness cinematography the right way. Now, because this is YouTube, especially in the videography and filmmaking space, we all want to know what gear is best for fitness cinematography. And essentially what I'm going to say is I'm a Sony FX6 user. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you need the same camera package as me, but what I will say, this is my favorite camera by far to date. In fact, I think for solo filmmakers and videographers, this might be the best option that you can get to get cinematic images, especially if you're working with things like fitness cinematography. Now my intention isn't to make this a completely gear-based video. I actually want to talk about picking the camera package that you're most comfortable with. Now with fitness and cinematography, things are gonna be running very fast paced, you're moving around quite a bit, and you might not have time to change around things like cameras and lenses all the time. And picking a package that you're most comfortable with not only means it's gonna be better on shoot day to get the most out of the footage you wanna get, but nothing screams unprofessional like not knowing how to use the gear, even if you bought the most fancy camera package and the best looking lenses. The next thing is picking the proper location because that's one of those things that can take your image from looking pretty good to absolutely great. Now, with picking locations, you wanna find big open spaces. Now, a lot of you guys, when you're shooting cinematic fitness videos, you're probably gonna end up picking a gym. Now, the reason why you wanna do that is to actually increase the depth in your image. Ultimately, depth is gonna be one of those things that's really gonna push your images to the next level. And be able to pick really big spaces in terms of your location with different layers and elements in the backgrounds of your images is gonna be a way that's gonna emphasize your subject or the character that you're actually working with. Now, I do bring lighting packages when I'm shooting commercial stuff, but you wanna find places with big windows that give you big opportunities for natural lighting. Now we spend thousands of dollars on trying to make our lighting look as natural as possible, but you could cut a lot of that trouble in half by just picking locations that have big windows and allow for you to use the daylight to your advantage. Now something you might not think about is actually the color coordination in the location itself as well. Now when you're working with different fitness brands or influencers, there's going to be some unique outfits or unique product colors that you're gonna be working with. And picking locations with overpowering color is something that might throw off your shoot. So what I like to do is I like to pick locations with neutral color tones in them, more particularly the equipment that's in the gym. Now some gym owners have a particular brand color and they'll get equipment in either a really bright green or a bright red or a royal blue, and that might not fit the type of look that you're going for. Not only do you wanna pick big locations to maximize your depth and having big windows to maximize your natural lighting, but you also wanna make sure that the color combination and the type of equipment that's used actually complements the subject or the product you're going to be shooting, and you don't have colors that clash with each other, which throws off your image as a whole. Now, number three is going to be your lighting and the type of lighting you want to use. Now, we were just talking about having the most natural lighting as possible, but there's nothing wrong with bringing in another fixture to give you some motivated lighting, give you some wrap and add some dimension into your subject. Now, for me personally, I use the Falconize light panel because it's light, it's compact, and it also hooks up to V-mount batteries, so I don't have to rely on finding things like outlets in order to get my image looking the way that I want it to. I'm gonna shoot on the shadow side of the light. So if I have somebody that's helping me out on the shoot and they're holding the falconized panel on the left side of my subject's face, I'm gonna be shooting from the right hand side into the shadow part of the face, adding more depth and dimension into my image. Now in fitness cinematography, I do have two speeds. The more natural and run and gun lighting that we just talked about and our low key dynamic setup. Now this is an opportunity for myself and all of us to do our best Morgan Cooper impression and start bringing out our tube lights, our haze and going for a low key dynamic type of look. This is where we start leaning to the silhouettes in our images and things don't have to look perfectly exposed and lit and proper. We can start making things look a little bit more gritty and start using things like tube lights as practicals, toners for the room and adding in haze to add that extra sense of dimension. Now in terms of the lighting that I use in this scenario is I'll use my big key light shining through either a softbox or a six by six scrim and I'll actually use tube lights like the Nanlite Pavo tubes. Now I've had these lights for the last couple of years and Nanlite actually sent me a bunch of the new version twos to try out and I think these go a long way, especially as practical lights and toners for the room. Now Nanlite Pavo tubes are fully RGB and with the new version, you could actually connect it to your phone in order to get some interesting looks without having to go to each individual fixture and set it up yourself. 
Now the hazer that I use is actually pretty much one of those Halloween foggers that you can get on Amazon, but in a lot of situations it does the trick. And honestly, I don't wanna spend $400 just to get a hazer. So before I get into the directing and the camera operating part of this video, I actually wanna to talk to you guys about create and earn by the art of documentary. Now, if you guys are familiar with Mark Bone and Mike Damonte's course, you do know that the art of documentary is an educational platform where documentary filmmakers can learn to get better as storytellers and filmmakers. Now I did purchase is module one and two and I actually took a lot of those skill sets and I applied them to the fitness cinematography that's actually taking me to places where I honestly didn't think I would find myself there's actually a new module called the create and earn now this is something that's incredibly interesting especially for you guys that are getting into fitness cinematography they actually take you on set where they're actually filming a fitness commercial at a local gym in Toronto and I would know because I was there but on top of that they teach you the business side of filmmaking not only do they teach you how to deal with different types of clients, but also how to do things like creating a YouTube channel to give you another form of income in order for you to increase the revenue for your business. This is something that I wish I had four years ago when I was just starting out and a resource where I could bounce my ideas off of somebody else that knows more than me in order to become better as not only a storyteller, but a filmmaker and also growing as a business, which essentially a lot of us are. Now, if all that sounds good to you and you want to find different ways to use your camera to make yourself some money, especially in fitness cinematography where budgets aren't the highest, check out the art of documentary create and earn because it's going to break down all of those things in order to put you in the best position to enhance your business. Now, the time of this video is the doors had just opened and you can actually use my code that's right over here in order to save yourself 10% off any of the three modules, whether you want to go to module one, two, or you want to jump in to create and earn to start learning today. Now, I would tell you to tell them that I sent you there, but if you do look deep enough in Create and Earn, you're gonna see a familiar face that might be in one of the episodes. But don't wait, don't hesitate. There's only two times a year to sign up for this course, and I'll see you guys in Art of Documentary Create and Earn. Now we're gonna get back to the last tip of this video. Okay, so let's talk about directing and the cinematographer role, especially when you're doing, well, fitness cinematography. Now, first things first, I'm gonna say it, I shoot handheld 99.9% .9 for these types of videos. Reason being is I have a little bit more creative control, and for the most part, a lot of my clients, a lot of the companies I work with prefer shooting handheld to get that look. Now, what you do wanna make sure is that your camera either has IBIS or you've rigged at your camera to have some heft, some thickness to it, to make sure that the sways and the movement of the camera look natural and it doesn't look like you had 16 coffees and things are shaking all over the place. Something that a lot of filmmakers will disagree on is autofocus, but what I'm gonna say, especially with the high energy, the high pacing, and the running around that comes with fitness cinematography is let autofocus be your friend. Now, a lot of the cameras nowadays, including the Sony FX6, has really great autofocus tracking. And if you're somebody like me that uses handheld moves that run in or you're rotating, you're moving around quite a bit, manual focus might not be the best thing to use in that application. Now don't get me wrong, there are some shots that absolutely need manual focus and sometimes it's the only reasonable option, but letting autofocus be your friend in situations, especially with a medium like this, is something that's gonna go a long way and you don't have to think of yourself as less of a filmmaker because you're using autofocus. Directing fitness cinematography can be pretty simple. Essentially what you wanna do if you're working with athletes or different models is you wanna give a workout that works for them. Ideally, a lot of the times, I actually have that person that I'm working with decide the type of exercise that you're doing. That way it minimizes injury because you're not getting to do something that they're either not used to or straight up don't have the capabilities to do. Now, once they've picked out their favorite workouts, they're probably wanna go at 110% to look good for the camera, which we all love to do. But what you wanna do is actually have them scale back the actual volume of the workout that they're doing while you're directing on set. Typically what I do is I have my subjects actually operate at 60 to 70% of what they would do in the regular workout. That way they're gonna be able to last a little bit longer. They're gonna perform less reps and less sets, which means it's gonna take a lot longer to burn out, but if I keep the low volume and the reps and sets keep going and going, even though they're not putting a maximal effort, if it looks that way, I'm able to get a lot of different shots and a lot of different camera angles, making sure that my coverage is in check. Now, cinematographers and filmmakers, especially for operating on camera, we all like having different types of shots that we like doing in our films. And for me, with fitness cinematography, I can break it down to three different shots. Number one is obviously gonna be your action shot, which is your subject or the person that you're working with with is gonna be doing some sort of an action and that's probably working out. And next you're gonna have your detailed or your insert shots. Now, if you're somebody that's working with a company with physical products, this is an opportunity for you to actually add some shots of that particular product. If they work in athleisure, make sure that you're capturing logos. 
And if it's neither of the two, make sure you're getting details like putting weights on, setting up for a workout, or the minor details that you might shoot really, really tight to give the viewer a different angle and to know that something is just about to happen. And last but not least is the hero shot. This is one of my favorite shots that I use in a video because in one frame you can tell who the character is, what they're feeling, what their personality is, and it starts to get you a little bit excited for the video that's about to happen. And if you put your hero shots at the end of the video, it acts as a lasting impression for once you've seen this really exciting high-paced video, this is the person that did all of those things. And there you have it, those are the four pillars and the four tips that I have for fitness cinematography. Now this is a pretty niche style of filmmaking, but what I will say is that this industry is quickly growing, and as a filmmaker that's trying to earn money, or someone that's just trying to expand their portfolio and expand their horizons, this might be the space for you. And I hope that you guys took away these four tips, and you can apply it to your filmmaking, and you can start making some pretty dope stuff. So I hope you guys like this video, and if you like more stuff like this, make sure you comment, subscribe, or watch this video over here. See you guys in the next one. Peace. I learned so much from hanging with the guys over at Reach. But Lecrae was clear that we were way too underground.